Thank you for joining us on Off the Press, a segment on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, we take a look at the headlines in the papers and try to make sense of it with the help of our guest. We'll be joined a little later uh, by Chris Wandu, the publisher of CKN um, News. Exactly. And uh, we're kicking off this morning with stories from The Nation uh, newspapers. One of the, of course, the major one there says soldiers deployed in cities to stop more looting. Um, also, NEC panel to meet with the youths on jobs and others. An Ip Man is in the news this morning saying force scarcity likely for two weeks. I'm not sure if Nigerians are ready for this. Um, Nigerian Toriola lies MTN CEO designate and also Quara didn't divert palliative, uh, says Kakovid. A few other stories this morning on the nation newspapers. Uh, Buratai gives marching orders. UK urges restraint as normalcy, normalcy is restored. A 409 held in Abuja, Ilori and Ondo State. And also police abandoned streets in Lagos and Abuja. Residents live in fear. I actually saw a conversation about that um, a few hours ago. Uh, someone talking or complaining mostly about how there seems to be no police presence you know, on the streets of Lagos. You know, mainland island everywhere. It seems they somehow just disappeared. I'm I not actually sure saw um, some officers. I've seen them on two occasions. When I'm driving home, mm. I see them somewhere around the island here. Uh, so I wouldn't, uh, based on that, I wouldn't say there isn't. There might be yeah. uh, in other parts, but the people where they are, they're not seeing. Because it is, it will be, um, it will amount to stupidity at this time for there not to be security officers dotted around the city, even in plain clothes, if that is needed. Because before SARS, there is police. The police is an institution in itself that yes. guarantees uh, the security of citizens. So that responsibility cannot be relegated to the background. What the people are saying, it's not a scrapping of the police. It's just a reformation of their processes of operation and interaction with civilians. Exactly. So, and, and, um, and, and if they see that as an attack on them, it means that they... For example, um, I've seen this a couple of times that... I've seen it on social media where people say um, racism is so American that when you protest against racism, you know, it, you know, it feels like you're protesting against America. I've seen that post on social media a lot of times. And then people respond with, oh, brutality is so much, you know, a thing of, you know, with the Nigerian police force that when you protest against police brutality, it seems like you're protesting against the police, which is, which is absolutely not the way it should be. Um, people saying that they do not want to be brutalized, they do not want to be attacked, they want to be treated with respect by their police force is not saying we hate, you know, policemen. It's not yeah, saying Nigerians I, I guess don't this want is, the police. This is us speaking to our police officers right now. It's not against um, the institution that you uh, represent. It's actually the conduct of a whole lot of um, officers who have been, you know, alleged to be culpable in brutality. And we've seen some evidence uh, confirming this uh, to that end. So yeah. it doesn't cover. There are some really responsible and hardworking, yes, you know, um, police officers in this country that deserves commendation, even in the midst of all that is going on. Some other thing that I saw um, yesterday, the Nigerian police force put out a post on Twitter um, saying, we're not all angels. We're working hard to serve you better. Um, <laughs> and I'm also, I mean, the response to that also was pretty interesting because um, people had to remind the Nigerian police force that there are certain jobs that you, you're not meant to have some bad apples in certain jobs. Um, well, it's, it, it, you, you, it's you, so long as we're humans, we cannot, even yes. in the churches, yes, we hear I the atrocities. That. I mean, we've moved away from some of the atrocities that's happening in the churches. Uh, we know the Catholic Church, for instance, has been shrouded in sexual molestation of young people for generations. Yes. We and also the know that, way, you know, so there is, there is no endeavor that is devoid of human frailty. The, the same way... Um, people who have been molested and have to leave with the trauma of that for life. Yes. Um, the perpetrators 
always, um, people always say they need to be jailed, they need to be punished. That's the same thing that Nigerians are asking for with the police, police force. And, and, and when I say there are certain jobs that you shouldn't have bad eggs, if these bad eggs are leading to loss of lives and property and brutality, then you, you, we can't excuse right, that. We can't say, oh, see, some, some pilots um, are good and some are bad. Let's see um, um, some other headlines here on The Nation that you mentioned. The yes. one that also caught my attention was the one on Quara didn't divert palliatives, says uh, Kakovid. COVID. The whole issue of this, you know, looting, you know, the stories just don't add up. You know, senators say they have these materials. They were just waiting to disburse it to the people. They're still trying to clarify it. I read the statement by Kakovic spokesperson. And even the explanation, I mean, for somebody that is an ordinary, level-headed, simple Nigerian, it didn't add up to me. Yeah, they... So how, I mean, how do you store things meant for disbursement? to people in your home. If these looting did not occur, we would never know that these materials have been stored in places like this. I've also and seen statements from governors saying, you know, they, they were planning to release them in batches. Um, you know, they probably were looking out for, you know, you know, if there was going to be a second wave of COVID-19 so that they can put... Exactly. Those, uh, Those things don't well. add up. Let, let's um, well, go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll have our guest join us to get his thoughts, not just ours, on the headlines this morning. Don't go away, please. Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, still so much to talk about and to share with you this morning with the little time that we have. Uh, and of course, remember, it's still off the press where we have our quick review of news stories making headlines. We've now been joined by Mr. Chris Wandu, publisher of uh, CKN News. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, sir, this morning. Thank you for dragging me here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you were telling us about the traffic on the way. Yes, um, so much traffic on Tottenham and Bridge um, coming in. You know, the other session of the bridge has been closed till about um, 12 noon. So, so much traffic and uh, I wouldn't know what causes it. Um, you just get to the point and <laughs> you don't get to see anything. Yes. That's legal traffic We thank you. you for taking the trouble Thanks to so come. Much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, we will um, look at the punch newspaper now protesters lawyers tackle buratai as army chief dismisses icc threat i am not afraid of travel ban ready to leave in nigeria says coas that's the chief of army staff now the second writer has you won't get away with killing peaceful protesters army chief told a uh, war of words is what think, what's been going on for a bit now. Um, just above the masthead, or let's take the one beside the, ma the masthead, uh, Senate asked foreign ministry officials to return 848 million uh, naira and 1.5 million dollars. A um, lot going on. Over there, OPS counts losses, ask government banks to support victims. Pro panel will get lucky shootings, CCTV footage, Songwolu. And then we have 649 suspected looters arrested, 34 remanded in FCT, Kwara, Adamoa, Cross River, others. And then there are some riders to that story uh, as well. Let, let's, let, let's uh, okay, let me leave you to take the big screamer there. Protesters, lawyers tackle Buratai um, um, as Ami Chief dismisses ICC threat and says he's happy to leave in Nigeria. <laughs> well, um, it's a tough time, it's a tough period, and uh, everybody's talking tough. So, expectedly, the Chief of Army staff is expected to say what he said, but you should know that um, he will not be there forever. So, if, if, he, if he does anything um, that has to trample on human rights, uh, he'll be held accountable, not only to Nigerians, but also to the whole world. Um, he's just an chief of army staff. There have been presidents. Um, so I can name so many of them. Um, Yugoslavia, uh, Chastello, name them. Uh, 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 Bashir, Omar, uh, yeah. what's his name? Omar Bashir. Uh, Omar, ba Omar Bashir, and a whole lot of them. Uh, they have been taken to the ICC. 
for human rights violations and not also forget what happened in Rwanda. So many of those um, perpetrators are still being tried currently. So uh, if uh, president and head of state can be taken to ICC, so I don't know why a uh, chief of Amistad cannot. So if he say he wants to stay in Nigeria, uh, well, it is his right, but whatever he does, he should know that he's accountable. So, um, but I just think he's just talking on the spot of the moment with what is going on. As a security chief, he realized that if this is not checkmated, it could lead to several other things, and, and that is what is, seems to be happening. Well, are you on the divine about um, the arrest of looters? There are some people who say, even prominent figures are saying, yes, they did well. No, some say no. There is something uh, morally bankrupt about looting, um, any sort of looting. It doesn't matter whether it's government, palliative, or Just private fine. individuals. Where are you? in this conversation because we hear now that 649 suspected looters have been arrested um, across states. It's more than that because the report I got this morning from um, from George, uh, from George, from the top security chief is that just yesterday they arrested 214 uh, looters. Um, day before that they arrested about 200 and about 230 as well. That's close to 500 only in George. So we are talking of Hundreds and mm -hmm. hundreds of people. Uh, but uh, my take on this is that um, there is no justification for looting. There is no justification for looting, irrespective of whether poverty, for whatever reasons. Uh, people's houses have been burned, people's um, warehouses have been looted and burned, um, people's uh, business. I have a friend that just um, by lucky here, his plaza was totally burned down, um, everything they looted. So are we saying that is justified? So there is no justification. Uh, but my challenge here is also, um, it goes to show the level of poverty in the, in the land. Uh, because uh, you must have seen, even to extend that those are, that uh, stood, could and could a tractor, and we have, you must have seen that on social media and the rest of them. But um, if our government have done what they're supposed to do, um, people wouldn't have gone, at least those going to loot the warehouses where we had the palliatives. And um, the mistake some of people have also been saying is that uh, those are palliatives of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. No, it is not. Uh, there's a difference between what the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs distributed and what the uh, committee on COVID. What we are seeing is that shared by the committee of Co on COVID, uh, which has the NCDC uh, um, and the rest of them through that private initiative. And uh, my problem is the... Um, some of the things being said by the governors, why those palliatives were not shared. Oh, we are keeping it for, uh, thinking that there will be another uh, surge <laughs> so, uh, so and the rest of them. And even if you are doing that, most of those uh, items have kicked. Some of them has, have spoiled and the rest of them. Are you going to distribute water? So, so that is, and the, and the second challenge that people, the question people also ask, how did they get to know that those things were there? Don't forget that what you did is that, it wasn't the governor that offloaded those materials. It wasn't the commissioner. It wasn't the local government chairman. These are peasants that were you invited to come and load at the end of it, or you gave them 500 naira. So they know where those palliatives are. So at any given point in time, they had to, they went there for the bet. I think this is a wake up call for us. To me, um, this is a first yellow card as far as I'm concerned, as far as this issue is concerned. I shouldn't go. For, I don't think if a footballer, a, 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 a footballer or a football fan, you wouldn't want to go for a second yellow card yeah. because that would be a red. Mm. All right. Yes. Let's move over to stories on the Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning. One of them, of course, is talking uh, from the UK, urging the panel of inquiry, judicial panels rather, to investigate all incidents. Uh, some other thing that it shows here on the Tribune. Um, it says uh, NBC finds AIT channels and Arise TV three million naira each, and that's with regards to the lecky shooting reporting. Insurance companies begin assessment of destruction in Lagos State. End SARS protest. The vice president Oshimbajo heads NEC committee to interface with uh, youths on employment. When I, when I actually saw that story, I opened it to read, to see maybe there is something, you know, a bit more 
and I mean, a, a bit more captivating about it. It's still a committee about, mm. I don't know if you read the story, it's still a committee about yeah. um, en enhancing employment of the youth. It's still a committee. It's still a committee. Yeah. And um, that is always what the challenges we always have in this country. We'll continue setting up committees and committees. And after that committee, you, will come to, you realize that another committee will be set up to, to, re review, to the review the finding of, the finding of that committee and we we'll continue wasting that. But one that more is, committee to yes, talk one about more committee to talk, Exactly. Then uh, you, are, you are in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but that yes, is sorry. the challenge we have here. We don't get to hit the nail on the head or hit the iron when it's still hot. Uh, we continue... Um, looking at issues, instead of treating the, the issues that we are, we start continuing looking at how to just look at the symptoms and the rest of them, why the main issues that we're supposed to be. And that has been the uh, problem. I just read, there's a stage yesterday that said, oh, we are going to employ 5,000 youth. Uh, we are going to give, um, look at this thing, 500 million um, to those um, um, whose um, properties were destroyed and the rest of them. But what I, people like us, uh, what I feel like saying is that we should be very careful. Um, it's just unfortunate that the, what is happening is happening. But look at it from what oh, most of the things been uh, been destroyed are still going to be paid. But we, uh, we're still going to use our money to get them back. Look at Lagos State. All the BLT buses, close to about 3.9 billion, that were destroyed. Now I'm hearing this morning that a lot of people are stranded at the bus stop because they cannot move. Because most of those BRT took buses, over 100 and something. <laughs> cannot move again, I've been burnt. We are inflating pains on ourselves, irrespective of whatever we if you, you understand what I'm saying? So it's a visual cycle for us. Um, our people have to be very, very careful in, in the course of agitating and the rest of them. I personally believe that we took it too far. That got a point where we're supposed to have said, okay, let us sit back and see what the government and give them an ultimatum to see. Yeah, if you don't know, implement this. It's not then. the people who are burning. I don't think they're the same people who were interested no, in negotiating. They are not. With but the, first place. The, the problem with the issue of protest is that you can only know how it starts. You don't know how it to end, and that is always the problem. Unfortunately, that's the much time will permit us. Uh, thank you very much, Chris Wandu, for joining us on the newspaper review. Thank you very much for having me as always. All right. I guess that's where we wrap things up this morning on The Breakfast. It's been an engaging conversation. I hope we served you well this morning. If we did, we thank you for watching. If we didn't, please find us on our social media platforms that will be shown on your screen at the moment. It will be shown on your screen for you to get in touch with us, share exactly. your thoughts yes. on what you've watched on our station. That is uh, Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And uh, of course, uh, you could also find our, uh, us on uh, YouTube uh, with the same uh, name, Plus TV Africa.